And now for the radio program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. The mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. And I'll tell you why. It's because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plans, even his innermost thoughts. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program... The Whistler. I am the Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's the Whistler. For the tops in entertainment, and for the tops in gasoline quality, it's Signal. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly independent signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Farewell, party. The gay, laughing crowd at the steamer dock hardly noticed the young woman in the smartly tailored gray suit as she half ran up the gangplank under the glare of the floodlight. Outwardly, she appeared calm, in spite of the fact that the cold hand of panic was tightening around her heart. Julia Chandler shuddered slightly as she stepped on the deck. Julia had made up her mind. In a few minutes, she was going to kill a man. There was nothing else she could do, and it would be very simple. On the final blast of the ship's all-ashore whistle, she would pull the trigger. Then she would melt into the crowd and go ashore. The body wouldn't be discovered until the ship was at sea. As she hurried down the deck, the events that had brought her here raced through her mind. It had all begun that night a week ago at the Club Lost Florist, where she was dancing with her husband's business partner, Ralph Ellis. You know, of course, Ralph, that this is our last evening together. Why, Julia, you surprise me. Oh, no, I don't. Why do you think I've avoided seeing you the past few weeks? The sort of thing has to end somewhere. Oh, I suppose. Let's just say that we dance to Barney together and make beautiful music and all that, but, um... My husband is coming home. Oh, he didn't let me know. Oh, inconsiderate. Once in a while, Bruce does put me before business. Yes. And I'm still only a junior partner, huh? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'll try to do something about that for you. Always good to have an in with a boss. <laughs> Naturally, you'll bear in mind that the boss wouldn't be at all cooperative if he thought... That I'm he... not a child, Julia. However, I don't think that even you can help me with the firm. I'm not sure I'm cut out for the work. I'm sure you're not cut out for any work. Always the sweet, gentle answer. Handle anything, couldn't you, Julia? Perhaps. I, uh... I wonder, are you really tired of me, or is it that restlessness of yours again? I wasn't aware that I was restless. Oh, come on, Julia. I know you better than that. You were bored with having no money, and then Bruce came along, and so you married him. Oh, really, Ralph? But then you found out that married life could be boring, too. And fortunately, I came along. Who's taking my place, Julia? Is it that singing teacher of yours, Gregory Blaine? You're being very difficult tonight, Ralph. Oh, then it is the singing teacher. What does he have to offer? A career, fame, or a more exciting romance? 
If you don't mind, I want to leave now, Ralph. You didn't answer my question. I didn't have to. I told you. My husband is coming home. That's all there is to it. <laughs> all right, Julia, have it your way. But wouldn't it be simpler if I just dropped you at Gregory's studio? Julia, come in, my dear. I'm sorry to make it so late, Gregory, but it was Ralph. I couldn't be cruel. My darling, you couldn't be cruel to anyone. No. Come here. Oh, Gregory. Uh, have, have you heard from your husband? Yes, he wired me from Chicago. He's coming tomorrow. That's why I wanted to see you. Julia, you're... You're sure there's no other way? Now, we've been all through that. What about the records we made? They're right over here. Oh. I see you've been playing them over. They all right? Yes. Your voice, Julia, it is so improved. You sing with such confidence, full, rounded tones. I don't mean the music, Gregory. The, the, the little record of our voices. Are they... Oh. It, uh... It will sound as if we're right in the room. Here, I'll show you. It's at the end of the song. Beautiful. Beautiful, my dear. Oh, thank you, Gregory. You've helped me so. Now, we will try it again. It's perfect, Gregory. Perfect. Now turn it off. And you... You still want to go through with it? There's nothing else to do, Gregory. No. Not unless you felt differently about the money. I know what I'm doing. You'll need that money, you know. Julia, I have enough for our boat fare to London, at least. I have my reservation already, and once there I could give singing lessons. You're until... going to give all your lessons to me. Help me study in London, Paris, wherever you think necessary. We'll be able to afford it, Gregory. <laughs> we can even afford to fail. Oh, that couldn't happen. Not with that voice in the proper and train. it's all settled. When, when it's over, you can go on to London, just as we planned. And I'll meet you there in a month. Perhaps last. Julia, you... You don't think that anything might... Nothing will go wrong, Greg. Nothing. You must believe that. We're going to kill him together. To be together. I'll... I'll be waiting to hear from you, Julian. You don't have to come back again. Just call. Gregory. Yes? Kiss me good night. With the prologue of Farewell Party, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. But now a prediction about a sight you're going to see oftener and oftener as the days grow warmer. Overheated cars parked at the side of the road to let their steaming radiators cool off. To make sure this annoying occurrence doesn't mar your summer driving fun, signal service stations have three little items that will make your cooling system young again. The first is radiator cleaner to remove clogging sludge and rust. The second is rust preventive to protect radiators of old cars or new ones from further corrosion. And the third is radiator sealer that stops any small leaks in a jiffy. These, incidentally, are just a few of your signal dealer's fine quality upkeep items that include purolator oil filters, fan belts, radiator hoses, spark plugs, and, of course, Lee of Conshohocken tires, famous for 45 years as the finest of first-line tires. You see, signal service stations are much more than places to buy Signal's famous go-farther gasoline and Signal premium motor oil. 
Wherever you see signal circle sign in yellow and black, there you'll also find complete conscientious signal service to help your car run better, look better, and last longer. And now back to the whistler. search, wasn't it, Julia? Trying to discover what you really wanted out of life. But at last you've decided, and it's quite simple. A career of singing, your devoted teacher, Gregory, as your husband, and the security of wealth that will automatically be yours with the death of Bruce Chandler, your present husband. It's all running through your mind as you drive home, winding up the steep grade of Canyon Road, maneuvering at sharp turns. You've always hated the big house on the hill tolerated it just as you've tolerated Bruce. But it's important now, isn't it? Desirable. The hill, the sharp turns over the canyon hundreds of feet below, the entire isolated setting. Yes, it's important, because it's a setting for murder, Julia. Your husband, Bruce's murder. You sleep well that night, relaxing completely. And then spend a long time before your dressing table in the morning. You want to look well for Bruce's return, as beautiful and disarming as possible. But on the way downstairs, you receive a shock. Voices, Julia, angry voices Listen, coming from Bruce's study I across the hall. Keep it from you, Bruce. What do you think I'm doing here? You knew I'd find out, that's why. I did not know. It doesn't make any difference. I'm through with you, Ralph, for good. Have you, have you spoken to Julia about it? Not yet. Well, perhaps if the three of us talk it over. There's no explaining away this sort of thing, Ralph. Not to my satisfaction. After all, I done for. I wish you'd leave. Right now. What do you plan to do? I have very little choice. I see. Well, if you won't listen, Bruce. I've heard quite enough. Now, get out of here. Julia. Oh, I'm sorry, Bruce. I couldn't help you. Look, Julia, tell him we've got to discuss it. Tell I him that I'd get out, Ralph. No. All right. I'm going. I don't suppose there's anything I can say, Bruce. No. I, I've been a fool. It won't make it any easier discussing it with you. The, the mess. But well, does it occur to you that you might be at least partly to blame? Away on business more than half the time, leaving the way clear for Ralph? Almost inviting I him. I said I'd rather not discuss it now, Julia. All right. Are you terribly hurt, Bruce? Not so hurt that I don't know what to do about it. Well, I wouldn't be too hasty. You, you might regret it. I'll decide that, Julia. I, I'm going into town to the club. I want to think this out alone. I'll have dinner there. Talk to you when I get back tonight. I'll be waiting. About nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, Bruce. We'll talk it all out then. Hello? Gregory. Something's happened. I can't tell you now. But, um, my singing lesson? Your thing? Yes? It has to be tonight. Tonight? Yes. It's the only way, Gregory, to keep him from changing things. Will you be here? Uh, what time? He's coming home at 9. You better be here by 8.30. But, uh, I'll be there, Julia. And bring the record. Of course. And... Gregory. Yes, Julia. It's going to be all right. You'll see. Everything is going to be all right. You had to reassure Gregory, didn't you? Because he seemed nervous and worried from the first. You're not exactly at ease yourself. 
with the demand for action thrust upon you so suddenly. You can't help wishing that Bruce hadn't learned about you and Ralph, that you could have arranged your own schedule. But life doesn't always go according to plan, does it, Julia? No. And as Bruce will soon learn, neither does death. You wait anxiously all afternoon. Promptly at 8.30, Gregory's car swings into the drive. A few moments later, you hear the maid answering the door, oh, admitting yes. him into the front hall. Excuse me, sir, if you would have a chair. Thank you. I'll tell Mrs. Chandler you're here. Who is it, Edith? Mr. Gregory Blaine, ma'am. Who? Oh, oh, yes. Back here, Gregory, the piano's in the study. Oh, yes, of course. Edith, I really want to try and get something accomplished tonight. Will you see that Mr. Blaine and I aren't disturbed? Certainly, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, Gregory. Hello. So nice to see you again. So nice to see you, Mrs. Chandler. I've been practicing, I hope, in voice, eh? Well, not as much as I should. But... Now, now, we'll see, we'll see. I'm going to be strict tonight and make you work hard. Oh. <laughs> I uh, trust we won't be disturbed. No, I've just been telling Edith here that we Don't must... worry, ma'am. I'll take care of it. Call me when Mr. Chandler gets in, of course. Yes, ma'am. So far, anyway. I don't worry. Oh, where's the record? Oh, right here. It's the little one that has I know, I know. I will have to hurry. Remember the path I showed you? Yes, yes. And leads directly to the road. You can intercept Bruce there. Uh, what did you bring? A gun. Oh. It's just in case, Julia. That's all I would use it. No! No, this had to look like an accident, like you missed a curve and you drove off the road. I understand. You can go out through the window there. Mm. Lead down to the terrace. And afterwards, get back as fast as you can. The, the maid. You're sure she won't come see that I'm not here? She wouldn't dare. The record will be on. Now, she'll think you're playing for me and talking to me. She wouldn't interrupt after what I said. All right. Pray now. Be careful. Julia. Julia, you do love me. You wouldn't go let on, me... Gregory, go on. We haven't much time. You'll be at that curve any minute. All right. All right. Oh, and uh, Julia... Yes, yes. I... Well... After you phoned me this morning, I called the steamship line. I had my reservation changed. I'm leaving on the midnight boat tonight. All right. Under these circumstances, I, I think it's best this way. You understand? All right, all right, Gregory. We can talk about it later. Now, hurry. It's underway, Julia. Your plan to eliminate your husband, the answer to everything. You watch Gregory climb out the open window and move off into the darkness. You stand there for several seconds, visualizing all that's going to happen. In your mind, you see Bruce's open convertible winding slowly up the treacherous road, stopping as Gregory steps out into the glare of the headlights. You picture the sudden movement as he strikes, and then you see Bruce slump over the steering wheel, Greg starting the car, and then letting it roll over the embankment. Yes, in your mind, you see it all, Julia. But you have your own part to do. So you move across to the phonograph, set the record in place. Records of a few songs and a few remarks from Gregory as he accompanies you on the piano. It's going to be easy, isn't it, Julia? With no chance of you or Gregory becoming involved. You start over to the window as Gregory begins the introduction of the song and the record. You wonder how things are going for Gregory as you hear his voice now, on the record prompting you to begin. Now a few bars more, and you will begin. <gasps> Bruce! Hello, Julia. I'll shut this off a minute if you don't mind. What, what happened, Bruce? I thought you weren't coming back until... Nine. I know. It just didn't take me that long to make up my mind, Julia. Oh? Huh. That's funny. What? The maid. She said there was someone in here with you. <laughs> Must have been the record that fooled her. Oh, well, Bruce. Bruce. Is... What is it, Julia? What's the matter with you? Was there someone here? I... I... What's the big window doing open? Is there someone out there, Julia? Please, please, wait. Stay away from that window. Go! <laughs> For more than a minute, you stand there, frozen in the middle of the room, as your husband sinks to the floor. 
without even going to him, you know that he's dead. That somehow Gregory has ruined everything. Completely destroyed your pat little plan of an accidental death on Canyon Road. Worse, Julia, is the realization that you too will have to pay for the stupidity. Already you can hear Edith hurrying down the stairs. You turn toward the door and stop at the sound of Gregory coming back in through the window, gun in hand. There's still a chance for you, isn't there, Julia? And you're going to take it. Rose! Rosie, stop, Rose! You killed my husband! Julia! Mrs. Chandler, what happened? I heard... Oh, it's, it's Mr. Chandler. He shot him! Gregory shot him from the window! Stop it, Julia! Stop it! You don't know what you're saying. He just... He just called the police. He killed him. He... He, he killed Bruce. Why, you little double-crossing... Get out of my way! He's getting away. Stop him, Edith. Stop him. I'll call the police. I'll call the police. And that's all you can tell us, eh, Mrs. Chandler? Well, uh, there isn't anything else, Lieutenant. It all happened so fast. Edith, can you think uh, of anything? No, ma'am. It was just like you told it. Uh-huh. I shot him from the window, you say. Oh, no. He'd left through the French door, sir. Said he, he wanted to look at the garden. And you and your husband stayed inside? That's right. And then Bruce went over to the window. Just to glance out. And Gregory Blaine shot him? Yes. He fired through without any warning. Oh, have you any idea why he did this, Mrs. Chandler? Well, my husband, Bruce, he, he never approved of my studying voice. Oh. He didn't say anything at first. But after Mr. Blaine stepped outside, Bruce admitted that he'd seen him in town. He told him never to come out here. Oh, but to kill someone over a thing like that. No, it could oh, I don't know, Mrs. Chandler. Some of these musical guys are pretty strange. Well, I'll try to run him down. And you'll, you'll start looking for him right away. Sure. Start a full-scale manhunt if we have any trouble. Don't worry, Mrs. Chandler. We'll get him sooner or later. Then we'll have all the reasons. Thank you, Lieutenant. Edith, when you show... Oh, never mind, Mrs. Chandler. I can find my way. My man and the coroner will take care of everything. Now, you'd better get some rest. You don't look so good. But there's no rest for you, is there, Julia? Because, as the Lieutenant said, when they find Gregory Blaine, they'll have all the reasons why. And suddenly you know that you've got to find Gregory first, Julia. Find him and kill him tonight. You glance at your watch. It's only ten o'clock, two hours before Gregory's boat sails. There's still a chance you'll be at the studio apartment, isn't there, Julia? Someone else been looking for him? Mm -hmm. The police. They was looking for him. Oh, fine, lot of sleep I'll get tonight. The police might as well move in here. Oh, but they won't get this one, because he won't be back. Did he, did he tell you that? Oh, why, he didn't have to. You see, he moved out, paid his rent, took his trunk and everything. Did he say where he was going? No. That's what the police wanted to know, too. Oh. They told. I haven't any idea. Say, do you know where he is? What? Oh, no, no, of course not. No. Thank you. Thank you very much. But you do know, don't you, Julia? And there's still time to reach Gregory before the boat sails. At the steamer docks, you check the sailing. Drive down to Pier 29. There's a gay crowd of passengers at the gangplank, surrounded by friends who have come to see them off. You move through them unnoticed and go aboard, timing your movement so you can reach Greg and kill him during the last blast of the ship's whistle. Um, oh! Excuse me. Are you looking for your stateroom too late? Oh, no, no. I, I came down to see a friend. Uh, uh, me please. too. I've been looking for my friends at the last there, and I can't find him. Old Charlie Beavis. 
You wouldn't be looking for old Charlie Beaver's suit, would you? No. no. I can't understand it. Charlie promised he'd come down to see me off. Good old Charlie. Got to have a thought with old Charlie before we say anything. And say, <laughs> you're a very pretty girl. Oh, please, please. <laughs> Perhaps he's waiting in your cabin. Yeah, hey, I thought of that too. You, you know something? I can't find my cabin either. Well, the steward... I, I'm sure he'll help you. Sure, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to find an old Charlie. Say, he would like to have a drink with us, too, wouldn't No, he? no, I wouldn't. Please. Oh, it's nice to have a soldier come down to say goodbye. Yes, 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 yeah. it is. Well, I hope you find your friend, lady. I will, I will. I... Oh, I've got to find him. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, since you're going to be passing a lot of signal service stations during your summer driving, I thought you'd like to know a little more about the organization that brings you the Whistler and the policies it stands for. First of all, signal products have always been sold only through independently operated stations. The reason... Signal believes that a man who has his own money invested in his own business naturally has more incentive to serve you better. Secondly, because you want top quality products for your car, every Signal service station is backed by an organization that serves almost 2,000 Signal dealers with facilities to bring you every latest advance in petroleum science. Do drivers like this combination of Signal's personalized service Plus, fine quality signal products? Well, just consider the facts. From a mere handful of dealers in Southern California, Signal has grown and grown. Until today, Signal stations serve six Pacific Coast states, from Canada to Mexico. For extra driving pleasure, extra performance from your car, why don't you, too, join the switch to Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline? And now, back to the whistler. The gay crowd at the steamer dock was shocked at the news of the killing on board. They hung around the gangplank in little groups, whispering, trying to edge over and talk to the three passengers who had witnessed it, and then fell back to make way for the police as they led the suspect to shore and into the office of the dock master. Oh, Lieutenant Skelly. Oh, yes, what is it, Sergeant? We picked up that singing teacher, Gregory Blaine. He was going to take the boat, too. Had a gun and a blackjack with him. Oh, good. Take him down to headquarters. We'll get to him later. Meanwhile, I'm busy with our friend here. Yes, sir. Okay. So you're Ralph Ellis. Yeah. Sit down, Ralph. And don't try to hold out on us. Three people saw you kill Julia Chandler. Now, what was it all about? All right, what's the use? I had an argument with her husband. We're, we're business partner. Not an argument. Over her? No. No, nothing like that. It was... It was... About some funds, company funds I'd mishandled. He he was going to turn the matter over to the police. I see. I, I was trying to get out of the country, and this was the first boat leaving. When I saw her coming along the deck, well, I, I figured she was after me, that's all. And why should Mrs. Chandler be after you? Because she must have seen me at the window a couple of hours ago when... When what, Ralph? When I killed her husband. That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life. Possibly your own.
Featured in tonight's story were Lorene Tuttle and Gerald Moore. The Whistler was written by Bob Gray with music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, at the same time next Wednesday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.